Welcome to Let's Talk About Real Estate, the podcast for real estate agents everywhere. You are now part of a group of real estate agents and entrepreneurs who want to make a difference in their lives. People who are looking for ways to create hacks into the real estate profession in order to make more sales and at the same time have more time off. Agents are realizing that the old ways simply aren't working for them anymore. They are working far too many hours and most don't enjoy a work-life balance. Get ready to explore ways to hack your real estate life. I'm Lisa B. Hi and welcome to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. My name is Lisa B. In this week's podcast, we're going to look at the week in review and what's been happening at the coalface in real estate. So this is what real estate agents are talking about in Australia and sometimes anywhere in the world. So this is at the coalface, what agents are actually experiencing right now. We spoke about the referral websites that we believe are using false and misleading marketing. Some of the sites promise the consumer they will choose the best real estate agent for them. We believe this is not to be the case. And in my opinion, these sites, some of these sites are lying. The way some of these sites operate is that they pass a referral only onto an agent that agrees to pay them 20% to 25% of the total commission. It's not the best agent at all. I can't believe they've actually been able to carry on this long. I can't believe that the consumer has been misled for so long. The other side of this equation I spoke about is how these websites are interceptors. They intercept the inquiry by spending huge amounts of money on Google advertising. They do this so they can appear on page one of Google. This is working for them. This is what's got them to be successful. The benefits that local real estate agents have is localized marketing. Google prefer to recommend somebody that is local. If local real estate officers would consider using Google and Google AdWords and also consider working on their search engine optimization, we would see these sites either not being able to afford to be in in as many locations as they are and not have enough money to to spend on on being such a big presence Australia-wide. Another thing we spoke about was Purple Bricks News. The UK's Advertising Standards Authority has ruled that two TV advertisements for Purple Bricks cannot be shown again in the current form because they're judged to be misleading. The complaint was relating to being sufficiently clear in the ads that the fee payable to Purple Bricks was not conditional on the sale of a property. My favourite quote was, if you can't beat fear, do it scared. We discussed using the term Australia's number one real estate office. Our theme seems to be this week to be careful of misrepresentations. Noosa real estate agent Clint Smith from McGrath made the news with his killer dance moves at an open house. Halloween, we also spoke about whether or not you should participate in handing out lollies. I believe that you should promote for kids to come to your office, possibly first before they go trick-or-treating to collect their lollies. Samantha McLean from Elite Agents Magazine is putting on a seminar in Sydney featuring Matt Hall, Matt LaHood, plus many other quality speakers. Milton Rendell made it to 30 years in real estate. I pose the question, will traditional real estate agents start doing a fee structure similar to, say, Purple Bricks and some of the other discount agents? A lot of the other discount agents are offering an upfront fee, which is non-refundable. Will traditional agents go down this road and opt for segmented payments and upfront fees? We spoke briefly about how to handle a text from a potential vendor about reducing the fee. I believe any fee issue should be handled face to face. We spoke about another discount agency offering a $7,500 flat fee. I liked one of our members' comments. He said, before I entered real estate, I owned butcher shops for 20 years in the 80s and 90s. If you want to see an industry decimated, then this is a good example. Predatory pricing, health regulation went mad, and the big boys destroyed independence. We were reinventing our businesses daily with 200 shops closing yearly through the mid-90s. Take note and use all your senses. Remember, big fish eat little fish, and that is a history lesson. Never forget history if you want to survive. I was 30 years of age representing Hunter Meat Industry. I spoke at a conference to fellow members. This was a time when the only way shop owners were competing was to discount. Good operators were hurt, discounters were hurt, and shops still shut. My advice 25 years ago was know your business, know your overheads, and price your products accordingly. The only thing that changed for me is the horse I'm riding. And my other tip is to know what you give your accountant each year. 
Owners need to run the businesses, not accountants. He's got some very wise words, this man. One of our members during the week found a tenant who had committed suicide. Unfortunately, this seems to be happening more and more. I really believe that there needs to be a conversation in every real estate office about the subject, whether it's not going alone to a property where you suspect something may have happened or it's considering what would happen if this were to ever happen to one of your staff members. I also suggested that it may be a role that the real estate agents can adopt to try and help communities to get to know their neighbours. Real estate agents could run meet your neighbour nights, for example, invite three or four streets to your office for drinks and light snacks. You could door knock your street and say that you would love to help people get to know their neighbours again. Allow them to think back to when they were younger. We knew everyone. Promote neighbours talking over the fence. I don't know about you but when I was younger I knew everybody in my street and for miles around me. Now I know really no one. We had a member post a private question about how to get the vendors to agree to having open houses. There were some great discussions around that. We had Tom Ferry 10 reasons most real estate agents fail, which I loved. Number one, interested versus committed. Number two, not strategic. Number three, the fear of mistakes and the desire to look good. Number four, no role model or the wrong role model. Number five, your gas station is only open one day a week for an hour. Number six, Monday to Friday, nine to six mentality. Number seven, no sales swagger. Number eight, no metrics backed goal. Number nine, poor schedule and weak routines. Number 10, lack of financial management. And lastly, we spoke about sign jumping, something that I really, really dislike. To leave on a positive note, Ryan McCann posted a pic progress is impossible without change isn't that the truth we can't be scared of change we always need to adapt and we always need to look out for ways of how we can progress so that's all that we spoke about this week in our let's talk about real estate community thank you for being a part of it i really appreciate all the input and all the private messages you know all the messages of people saying that they love the group If you'd like to join our group, if you're not part of our group yet and you'd like to join, you'll find us on Facebook and let's talk about real estate. We'd love to have you. We love to talk about anything to do with real estate. So my name is Lisa B and I'm from the Real Estate Hotline. If there's anything I can do to help you in your real estate career, please reach out. I'd love to help. Thank you for joining us at Let's Talk About Real Estate. I'm Lisa B from the Real Estate Hotline. I hope you found plenty of ideas to hack your real estate career. For more information, please go to www.therealestatehotline.com.au and please join our Facebook page at Let's Talk About Real Estate. See you next week. Bye.